<laughs> like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday night show with a little meditation at the end. Stick around for that on uh, the Great Flat Earth Debate. Of course, it's not going to be a debate. It's no. a little discussion with you all and with us. We're very excited for that. Debate implies that there's going to be an argument and that there's going to be ego involved. And of course, that is not the case. It is just a simple discussion about beliefs. And, you know, we should be able to talk about things that are divisive and uh, separate. And we should just be able to all have conversations about stuff because we're adults mm -hmm. and, you know, people have different perspectives and it's all just information. So, you know what, we're so happy mm -hmm. if that you joined us tonight. And as many of you know, across all of our channels, all of our YouTube channels, we've got the GFL station, Above and Beyond Duality, the Sunflower Life, wherever you're joining us from tonight. We had a poll last week. So you posted and we said, just a poll. Um, what, what was it? It was, what do you think about the earth? Is it flat? Is it round or other? Please specify. Exactly. So yes, this is a very uh, divisive question in itself. So, um, you know, even asking that question, we kind of believe that it promotes division and separateness, but we're on this big thing right now that we're trying to unite through division because mm -hmm. the thing is, is that we're all so different. None of us are ever going to believe the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, ultimately in society, in, in this density, as we move through it, or some of us don't, in fact, um, but we're all going to the same place. Ultimately, in the end, we have been, we've allowed ourselves to believe that our belief systems are a really important part of our identity and that this mass um, collective, I guess, of people has to believe the same thing and you have to sort of fit into that. And there's other variations of that. You know, there's the hierarchy that's built up with the scientists and historians, and it's all very, very egoic, this information. So the goal is for tonight is to have a discussion. We will we'll, uh, involve you guys. We'll need your guys' participation in different parts. We have but, questions. Um, yeah, but make sure <laughs> when you're commenting, you're not commenting in absolutes. You're commenting from your opinion and your belief, as we shall do as well. And um, we'll keep the, the chat and the, com and the conversation congruent because we're all going to the same place ultimately, even if we have different beliefs on the way. Keep it kind. If people are not keeping it kind in the chat, I will just throw you in a timeout. <laughs> I don't want to have to do that. Please don't put that up on me. But uh, you get to decide whether that will be you or not. I saw a comment already scroll by say it's physical science. And uh, yes, we live in a physical realm. And if you only want to rely on your physical senses, then yes, it is going to be a very physical experience for you. But there is a lot of things happening in the energetic realm that we can't see. So we are just very open minded, open hearted to everybody's perspective. And some people are very solid in what they believe and some people are, are more fluid and some people are just like who cares <laughs> yeah and it's not actually physical science that's um maybe i want to present something different to that because when you look at the inner earth civilizations especially around the fall of atlantis one of the big things that happened was a separation from uh, the physical plane to the etheric plane the, the the gap got really really wide and then went wider and wider in, until the etheric plane was very, very difficult to access outside of portals and, and things like that. It's quite a complicated subject. But in order to get into the inner earth and into the etheric plane, you enter into the metaphysical sciences. And that's why traditional uh, physical science, mainstream science, this is changing now, thank goodness, but um, it doesn't recognize a lot of the metaphysical topics, which is why it comes up with these uh, crazy explanations and doesn't involve the metaphysical realm. So it can't explain them like how the pyramids were built and, and things like that. When you involve metaphysics and things like that, things become much more explainable. So it's not necessarily a set physical science. It's much more than that. And of course, we have our opinions too. And, um, you know, that's allowed. You have your opinions, your beliefs, we have ours. And mm -hmm. we just want to present information and hear what everybody has to say, because 
really we just find out so much more from each other and we learn from not just having one perspective but from you know multiple looking at things from multiple angles so um let's see the results are in we did the poll and across all the channels we got a lot of votes we have a whopping number of people vote uh 1,357 votes we have. So David's going to, I guess he's going to bring up the polling results. Now, I think that this is a biased um, poll that we did for multiple reasons. So you were just uh, just saying that yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, for <laughs> All right. Is it up there? Can everybody see it? Yeah, they can. Okay, guys. So this the votes are in. And um, again, why it's biased? Well, we're obviously not a flat earth channel. So if we were and we were posting about flat earth stuff all the time, probably like 95% of our audience would be flat earth and they would be voting that way. Um, So, you know, we're kind of just a spiritual channel. So everybody just believes what they believe. And um, the other thing is why I think it's biased is mainstream conditioning. So if you were just, you know, living your life and you were just watching the news and you were just taking in the narrative, whatever anybody told you, and you weren't into conspiracies or anything like that chances are you would just believe that the earth is round so that's another reason uh why Mm -hmm. it's biased so it does seem like the conspiracy theory truther freedom community um that's kind of the the group that really believes the in the flat earth um theory or Mm -hmm. you know believes the earth to be flat i should say and um well we do fall into this category of being like truthers and conspiracy theorists and you know freedom freedom lovers um that's definitely not something that that we promote on our posts and i guess you know we can just come out and say it um you believe the earth is oh i believe it's round yeah he believes the earth is round and i'm really open but when I visualize and I picture the earth, I also visualize and picture the earth to be round. So um, you, like you were just saying, there's like a quantum environment that is kind of happening all around us that mm-hmm. we can't see with our senses. So even us just being physical observers to our own pole, we would expect the outcome to be majority yeah. round yeah so just because we have that expectation and it's our poll to a degree. i think yeah. that that those are the reasons why i think the poll is biased anyways so when it comes to belief systems what my encouragement to everyone is whatever the topic is it doesn't have to be this topic tonight is that um you're inspired to do physical groundwork when it comes to your own experience for example kelly said that um asked me what my belief was with the with the earth topic and it's spherical because of some physical experiences that I've had. And until I have other ones, then I won't move that. But I'm open to moving it, of course. And those are I've seen things from the multiple airplanes that I've been on, dozens and dozens of them over the years. And I have seen uh, curvature, in my opinion, in my belief. I've taken pictures of such. Um, I've seen the earth in meditation. I've other, had other people say that to me. And, and many other things in physical experience. And then of course, anything on top of that either lines up or it doesn't. And I think um, when it comes to ex- experiencing things, belief systems, they really have to tie into that. And if you think about what recently happened with the P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C, uh, you can spell that out, I'm not gonna say it on air. Would you have known there was one? Would you have known there was a V-I-R-U-S if it wasn't for the mainstream media? And the answer to that is probably not. No, like if you walked around, had physical experience in hospitals, on the ground with people, as many of us did, the mainstream narrative was one thing, but our physical experience was quite different. Um, And that's how we've been allowed to be manipulated. There's a lot of people have belief systems on things. I'm talking broadly now without any physical experience on the ground of that particular thing. And that's a risky place to be if your ego is not in check, because then you feel you have to, again, follow what people say, but have to impart that on others, which is that's the divisive territory we really want to stay away from with everything. 
So yeah, I just want to say if you believe the earth is round, you're going to see round. Like David's going to look out the window of a plane and he's going to see curvature. If you have have uh, believed for a long time that the earth is flat, you're going to look out the window of a plane and you're going to see flat. Well, that's not necessarily true. It is true because you you see what you believe and you create your reality. So either you believe it's flat or you believe it's round or you believe it's irrelevant. So these were the well, options of the no, poll no. i'm not getting into a debate no with i'm just you. saying that the reason why that's not necessarily f fully accurate is because you can have people who are practiced in neutral observation right you can take a hundred people who are trained in neutral observation and when it comes to viewing a just a physical 3d reality i'm talking about if they all viewed the same thing and they're neutral observers you'd probably get something to 95 percent would say the same thing based on the physical appearance of something but what i just said is if you believe that it's round yeah. you're going to look out the window and you're going to see curvature and if yeah. you're really like strong in your beliefs that it's flat you're going to look out the window and see flat so that's not a neutral observer now where the neutral observers fall into the category is other so i was actually really impressed um with our audience that over 20 percent said other which means they really do fall into that category of being kind of a neutral observer so either they just believe that it's irrelevant and they're not going to like give any thought to the question because it's divisive mm -hmm. um or or they just believe that what a person believes is going to create the reality. So if you want to go to the next slide, there's actually some comments that we highlighted. And these are just some of like the really good comments. Cause if we said other, we wanted people to specify like what they thought. And I really feel that this is the meat and potatoes of the poll, the people that said other, it's almost like they're the ones who are that neutral observer. They're the ones who, you know, maybe they believe the earth is, you know, the donut, the toroidal, there's all these other different, you know, realities kind of coming into play. And so many of them are, are great talking mm -hmm. about how it's a multi-dimensional plane. So if you're seeing it as, uh, you know, a, a 3d sphere or a 2d flat um you know maybe that's just the perspective of of the dimension that you're living in mm -hmm. but if you see it as you know a multi-dimensional living uh planet then you're more in that multi-dimensional kind of a phase so mm -hmm. i thought that there was really amazing statements in there and everybody can kind of take a look at at some I'm not sure if you should read that. Can you guys comment. read those comments? <laughs> There's some really funny ones. People are saying, you know, since we've never seen any undoctored photos of Earth, then who knows? That's just it. Like most yeah. of us don't know. Most of us haven't been to space. We haven't viewed Earth from way up there. And uh, some of them are just really funny. I don't care. Just beam me up, please. <laughs> <laughs> they're ready to go the earth doesn't exist we're living in a simulated world so arguing whether it's flat or round doesn't matter that's my opinion there is no earth it's just an idea so it's neither round or flat whatever you want it to be so you know when i created the poll i wanted the three options to be flat round and then the third one to be who cares mm -hmm. um <laughs> and i do think that i kind of fall into that category of like who cares it's just a conversation that promotes division and and separateness mm -hmm. but i i did think it was important to talk about this because we go into these mass meditations every week and a lot of times we do grid work so we go above the planet and we visualize the planet and we hold hands, you know, above the earth's atmosphere, mm -hmm. the firmament, whatever you want to call it. We join hands and we 
we bring energy up from Gaia. We send Christ consciousness down into the grids to clear a lot of the negative energy. So I thought it was really important to bring this all to discussion because I don't want us saying something in meditation, doing this incredibly important work. And then, you know, somebody who has a different perspective than us hears us say, you know, globe or something like that. And then, gets triggered because they don't think that the earth is a globe. And now all of a sudden, you know, they don't want to follow us anymore. And they don't want they're they're going to miss out on other important teachings that we're trying to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And other important discussions and other important topics just because they want to write us off because we don't think the same way and we don't have the same perspective as them. So again, everybody is totally allowed to have their own beliefs just as we are. And um, I just also want to say that I do perceive in meditation the earth as a globe as a spherical and again um that's because of books that i've read too yeah. like i'm really big on the law of one and raw always refers to our planet as a spherical planet and uh you know that's what resonates with me that's what i've grown up thinking but i follow like a ton of flat earth channels i'm really into the different perspective and like we watched a five-hour flat earth documentary the other day like we're very open and we're not set in our ways and we're not set in our beliefs on one way or the other I like the idea of the toroidal field how it has two poles and you know hollow in the center because I also believe there's an inner earth so you know that's just we all have our different beliefs and our different perspectives and I I quite enjoy following other people who have a different perspective because I just feel that I learn so much from them and I'm not you know, 100% all in on that the earth has to be this way. I just want all of the information that I can take in and then I can process it and, you know, create my own picture of my own reality. But ultimately, I do believe what we believe is what we will create. Yeah. Yeah, to a degree. I mean, it's um, again, I, I come down to just my my personality has always got to have some physical experience in something I believe. And I think most of my belief systems are like that. After again, I said this before to wrap down, but it's um it's remarkable to me, and I think a, a very um, poignant fact that uh, people who have these strong beliefs, as I said before, haven't got any personal experience in some of the things. I'm talking about broadly here. I'm not talking about this topic necessarily, or that may apply to it. Um, don't have any physical experience in what it is that they actually believe, which is interesting in itself. But um, there was one the other day where there's a the the Christian religious the, the the religion Christianity was saying um that yoga is if you practice yoga it's you're invoking satanic practice and sort of devil worship and, and things like that. A video with thousands of people agreeing on it, thousands and thousands. And um my question was, well, what's your physical experience of that? And my physical experience of yoga studios and people who do yoga is that I've been in many, many uh, across the years, is that those people are traditionally incredibly loving, incredibly friendly, incredibly well balanced for the most part. And the environment is incredibly uplifting and very strong with love and light. So there's one sort of set of belief systems swirling around over here, which is all rhetoric and hearsay with uh, great evidence and what, what have you. And then there's my experience, which says none of this relates to what I'm experiencing at all. So expand that on everything in your belief system. And um, I think that's important because your, your personal experience is so, so valid when it comes to the things you believe. And um, that's just what I do. Oh, absolutely. And I think that that's why we wanted to bring this to discussion. It's not to create separateness or to have a debate. It's so that we can all start seeing eye to eye in the sense that we all have very, very different beliefs and we are all completely unique individuals. Yeah. None of us are ever going to think or perceive things the exact same way, because we all have a different experience and we all grow up, you know, 
having different beliefs, having different parents. Um, and, and that goes with what David was saying, whether it comes to religion, and that's a really divisive place to be. When it comes to gender, that's a divisive place to be. Mm -hmm. Or uh, politics is really divisive. And then you've all seen what's happened in the last two years, um, wearing one, not wearing one, getting one, not getting one. It's all so divisive. So it's really about us just being okay with the fact that you might think differently than I do. And it's a really good point because you and I, we actually don't see eye to eye on everything. Like we have a lot of strong values, but even when it comes down to this, like David, he would fall more on the side of the earth being round. And I would be more in that other category where I'm just super open minded and I don't really think that it matters. Mm -hmm. So um, is there anything that you want to do on the debate side? We can click to the next slide. Okay. Yeah, we have a few more comments. I thought that they were just really incredible. And it seems like, uh, you know, someone really agrees. The one that's pointing down, it says this, I voted other and I'm open to it all. I believe there are many realities happening all at the same time. And those realities vary from being to being because mm -hmm. I believe this. I understand how people have vastly different views and that may be true for one being and completely different for another without being wrong. You know, like we said before, no one's wrong. Mm -hmm. Everyone's right. Whatever your truth is. Um, that's your truth. That's your belief system. Mm -hmm. That is your value. And nobody can argue with you about that. And nobody can take that away from you. Just like you can't really argue with anybody else and make them try to believe something that you feel really strongly. It's just never going to happen. Mm -hmm. So let's just reach that acceptance that we are all so vastly different yeah. and let it just be okay. And that's where we're coming from, mm -hmm. from tonight. So mm -hmm. is there anything that you wanted? No, this to, is all great. This is all to great. discuss. Yeah. Um, Carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it, it really doesn't what she, what she finished off by saying is um, it may be true for one being and completely different for the other without being wrong. Personally, to me, it doesn't matter what shape she is because I love her either way. <laughs> and I think that that is just the most beautiful statement. And um, it was actually the GFL station that just had really the really the best comments <laughs> yeah because everybody just seems so open-minded and they were all just talking about painting this beautiful picture of reality for themselves mm -hmm. and um so thank you so much gfl station and for everybody who's joining from there and for everybody who voted and even one comment the one that i circled here it seems that some highly evolved and creative minds listen to this channel grateful to know that we all came here to create the great awakening here together mm -hmm. so again this is just kind of what sums up this whole debate for me is that at the end of the day it doesn't matter you're gonna go on believing what's true to you I'm gonna go on believing what's true to me what I really want to accomplish is the fact that we can still come together and you know do the work on ourselves do the work on our planet regardless of our beliefs because we're all valid. Mm -hmm. We're all valid in what we think. Next. Um, not quite there not quite. yet. Hold on. Nope. Uh, someone said, um, and just leave a note in the chat, guys. What do you think? What is your personal opinion of whether the earth is round or flat? If you don't want to comment, feel free not to. But if you do, then throw it into the uh, in the chat now. I'd be keen to, to read some out. But um, someone just said, uh, why does this matter? Just curious. I don't know. But why does it matter? Well, I think the actual the actual uh, fin f final analysis or the final conclusions uh, lie with you. But what matters is the fact that what Kelly was alluding to, which is we all need to be able to get along because the earth that we're heading into, the higher dimensional earth, um, 
if you want to get there, you've got to leave some of this egoic stuff behind because it's going to hold you back. It's going to keep you in a certain vibration and it's not going to allow you to really move forward to the maximum that you can, in my view, in my opinion. And um, I see that happening a lot right now. And I see um, the fact that people are um, maybe believing different things. They're allowing that to cloud their judgment of, of, of God, really, of love. And that is that um, ultimately we are all one and that we are all extensions of God in soul form. Our packaging here looks a bit different in the physical. It's not always going to be that way, by the way. Um, but our, our role here is really to express God as much as we can through our thoughts, words, and deeds to others in the world. And if we're getting caught up in um, who believes what and, and that's important, then we're going to get distracted to that goal. So that's what's important. We believe that's the message underlying for tonight. But we're going to just throw some things out there as we go along as well. Yeah. So I was my answer to the question, why does it matter? Mm -hmm. I have two answers for you. The first one, short and sweet, to create unity through separateness and to create unity through division. Again, um, everybody's valid. Everybody should be accepted for who they are and what they believe. Mm -hmm. But again, let's just rise above these belief systems and understand that we can all still love each other and we can still move forward mm -hmm. um, as humanity. Now, the second part, why this matters and why we even started having this discussion in the first place mm -hmm. is because we actually have a big announcement. So you maybe heard that we launched our new website tonight, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you want to bring that I up can. now. Yeah. So the exciting announcement is that we are launching our store today on the sunflowerlife.com. So mm -hmm. we actually have t-shirts and some baseball caps and a lot of these designs that mm -hmm. David has been working on. You can now go to our store and order some of these designs. So we have some really cool uh, shirts. Some of them say the Earth Alliance. We'll show you some examples, but... Um, Anyways, we did create one shirt and we thought it was funny because we actually do have a bit of a sense of humor and we get really, really silly sometimes. And, um, <laughs> and we created, David created a shirt and I thought, you know, maybe it would trigger some people. Maybe it's divisive and it has to do with the topic that we're talking about right now. So, um, it, are you I can go. I'm screen just, sharing right now? I will, yeah, I'll show you. This is how you get into it, guys. Okay. Um, so David's going to show the so shirt fun. that we created. And again, like I said, just because we believe something to be true doesn't mean everybody does. And I didn't want people to feel like we are perpetrating division by seeing this shirt on our store. I didn't want people to get upset by the shirt. And um, we just think it's really funny because we actually have a lot of friends who are on the flat earth side of things. And they always bring up the... The water, right? So the, one of the big, yeah, one of the biggest things that I've heard, um, and I'm, I want to ask some more questions of people who think the Earth is flat tonight, because I'm really actually very curious. I don't know a lot about what um, what you folks believe in, but, and I'm curious to to understand that. But um, one of the things that I've heard, pretty much you know, universally, for people who believe the Earth is a, a flat plane or, or something equivalent to it, is that the water is always flat when at resting. So when the when the water is resting. It's always flat, which is very interesting to me because a simple scientific experiment seemed to prove that otherwise for me. Um, and Kelly had another one, but if you take a... We're getting swear words in the comments, so I might... Are people being mean to each other? Yeah. S September 26th, that's your first warning. Warning one, no swear words. Keep it kind, please. <laughs> I know you believe something different and that's fine, but... Um, Anyway, the scientific experiment I was talking about was literally on the flat water thing, is if you take a little glass of water, dip your finger in it, and then if you put it on a flat surface, you put a little droplet down, well, the droplet's very curved. In fact, it's so round, it's beautiful to look at. Um, and the reason for that is because the gravity is acting uh, the, the most at the base of the drop, 
and pushing it down. And that's what makes it flat. And there's less gravity acting on the top of the uh, droplet, which makes it keep its form. Oh, sorry. I was just going to mm. say we we actually don't want uh, you to leave. If you have already left, that is fine. But if you haven't left yet, I you know we're curious to know. Yeah. We're curious to know about um, you know the water. We're curious to know why you know people have their beliefs. So again, it's like super valid everything that you guys are talking about. We just want to know. We're just curious. curious we just yeah. want the information. So, you know, we just thought it was funny because <laughs> they always bring up the water. And yeah, David showed me the other day. He's like, put a droplet on the table. So I put a droplet on the table and it was as curved as can be. Um, the other thing is that water, when it's resting, yeah, it always finds a level. And like when I was really young, I was taught about the meniscus, how you, you know, you fill up the cup higher than level and it also becomes a curvature or mm. a dome or something like that so again we just thought it was funny because obviously there are arguments on both sides that yeah. debunk each other but that was always kind of the main argument that we heard so we created this t-shirt and we did not want it to be divisive at all so that was the second point about why this matters because we want to be able to showcase something that's funny but we also don't want to you know trigger anybody or, or hurt anybody's feelings or you know make them dislike us because they yeah. think that we have a different belief than so, them yeah don't leave the chat but just keep it kind and keep it through the eyes of uh, god if you can because um if you can't then leave and come back get centered and come back to any situation that should be our prerogative as human beings, because uh, these topics shouldn't trigger you. These things and people shouldn't trigger you. That's um, that's and a, a decision. You you can. The only way you can get triggered or anything like that is by deciding to be so. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. So triggers are actually great. Like they are an opportunity and they are a catalyst for change. So. Every time that, you know, I get triggered by something that David says and, you know, I get really frustrated, it's just an opportunity for me to look at myself. Like, why am I getting so upset? Why am I getting angry? And then usually there's something underlying there that I, I kind of need to look at. Mm -hmm. So um, looking at everybody as... Um, Every trigger as an opportunity for growth, really. And, um, you know, that's what we kind of talked about in our last meditation. It was one of our favorite meditations, January 19th. If you missed it, go back and do it. It was absolutely incredible. David brought in uh, Jesus at one point, And I was mm. talking about how the law of one states that the quickest catalyst for evolution is through others. So other people having different beliefs, other people having different perspectives, if we didn't have each other, mm -hmm. it would be like going through life with no mirrors. Mm -hmm. So we really do serve as a reflection for one another and triggers. Again, it's just asking us to take a deeper look at ourselves. So I don't mm -hmm. know if there's anything else you want to show on the website. Um, um, I'll maybe show you a couple more designs, guys, because it's uh, it's kind of fun. We've got loads more designs coming all the time. Yeah, there's but, some um, super cool stuff we'll, on there. Not to get into a sales pitch, but uh, <laughs> anyhow, we've got uh, like the Anunnaki t-shirt here. We've got uh, the Earth Alliance t-shirt, which is one of my favorites. We've got men's and women's. We've got ones like this over here, which kind of uh, spark the imagination a bit just gonna have a browse i want to go through it all but take uh, another look and there's something like oh the, show the heavily meditated like. one that one's so good and uh go check it out we've got multiple, meditated. multiple colors and multiple sizes in <laughs> most t-shirts and uh you can go and have a play if you want uh we're still working on mobile optimization guys so if you're going to go and buy something make sure you do that on the um uh the on your computer, on the desktop, on a laptop, or on a uh, phone tilted the other way. It's the best format to look at the website, the best experience, because uh, we're still optimizing that for mobile. But um, anyway, we've got loads of stuff, loads of fun designs. We'll be advertising some of those 
Uh, I don't want to stick around on this topic for too long, but uh, go and check it out. Okay, perfect. Well, if you are finished there, then we can move on to the slideshow. Sure. And I was just wondering, because I thought this was really interesting. I got into an amazing conversation with one of my uh, spiritual mentors and best friends who kind of has put me on this, you know, path of enlightenment. And we always bounce ideas and conversations off each other. And uh, we were talking about signs of the Zodiac. Um, she's really big into astrology, more so than I am. I'm, you know what? It's just a crazy energetic time right now, to be honest. It is a uh, new moon in Aquarius. Today is also the first, um, first day of the Lunar New Year, so the Chinese New Year. And we've just entered into year of the rabbit, year of the water rabbit. And I'm actually a rabbit, so woohoo, it's my year. <laughs> and uh, rabbits tend to be one of the luckiest signs of the zodiac. So this year, it just brings a lot of hope. Um, and we're really amplifying the new beginnings and the new cycles and all this stuff that is, is coming up right now because it really is like a new year. Um, so anyways, I was in this big conversation with my girlfriend last night about astrology and this and that, and uh, she brought up fixed signs, cardinal signs, and mutable signs. So I don't know if everybody out there knows where they fall into these categories, but we have it up on the screen here. So um, David is a Leo. He would be a fixed sign, and I'm a Pisces. So I would be a mutable sign. And my girlfriend that I was talking to about this, uh, she is a Capricorn. So she would be a cardinal sign. Um, so there's just a little description at the bottom. But basically, these can be broken down into seasons. Um, so you've got the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra. And they all happen in the very first month of the new season. So uh, Capricorn would be the first month of, of winter. Aquarius would be right now, like mm -hmm. middle month of winter. And then Pisces would be the last month of winter before it changes to spring. Mm -hmm. So every single sign is going to, um, you know, be like that. Cancer is going to be the first uh, month of summer, and then Leo is going to be the middle month of summer, and Virgo is going to be the last month of summer. So the cardinal signs are basically the start. They are the beginning of each season. So they are natural born leaders. They are very motivated to start um, really anything. So so they kind of are like the catalyst and like the way shower, and they. Um, you know, they're, they're really good with like bringing in these new ideas, but where they kind of fall short is uh, just lacking the energy to carry that all the way through. So like, you know how you start a new project and you're really excited about it, but then sometimes you don't finish it or you start a new book because you're really excited about it, but you don't finish it. So that would kind of be like the, the cardinal sign energy. And then you've got your fixed sign, which is like the middle of the season. And uh, these this group of individuals is very, very strong. They're very passionate. They represent that specific season. So they're very loyal. They're very powerful. They're very strong because they carry it all the way through from start to end. Um, where they would be a little bit lacking is because their beliefs are so strong, uh, it's really hard for them to kind of adapt to change and, and let things go. So that would be the fixed sign. And then the mutable sign, um, by the time you get to the end of the season, well, the season is going to end and it's going to change and it's going to be something else. So uh, the mutable sign tends to be very go with the flow, very adaptable, very expecting of change so speaking of mute i put september 26 in time out for five minutes like he's the cool <laughs> off a bit I didn't like his language so, yeah cool. again uh we we like to do the right speech challenge so we like to practice not swearing not putting anybody down not talking about any type of lack or limitation and um you know 
we just we all need to protect our energy. So anyways, we've got the cardinal, the fixed and the mutable signs. David being a fixed sign, he's pretty strong in his beliefs when he's set on something. Um, you know, you're 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 hard to change. You're you're set in your ways. And if I want to come in and I want to like tweak something, you don't really often like that very much. When it, when it comes to creative things, though, I kind of, um, I do, well, we both have a very creative streak. So if we're working on some content and uh, it sort of has to pass through both of us from an approval perspective, quite often we'll like different things. So when uh, those of you who are creative know this, when you are creating something, you want it to stay as you've created it. So there's always a balance to be found there if you're working with others because people will have different opinions. And those of you who work in bigger teams than that, We'll probably come into that um, in, a, in a bigger way. But um, yeah, it's very interesting sometimes to find that middle ground with us, but we, we, we work it out. But you know what? I just thought it was really interesting because maybe certain people who have a harder time letting things go, it's just because, you know, that's kind of your sign and that's kind yeah. of where you're rooted. And that's not a bad thing. Again, we all are perfectly unique as we are, and we all need each other to promote growth and mm -hmm. to see all sides of the spectrum. So everybody plays their part. Art, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. I just thought this was really interesting because mm -hmm. we were talking about it last night. So it's so important too. <laughs> I something. just um, so yeah, ast astrology is amazing, and I did just want to finish mm -hmm. um, with a quote from my girlfriend, the one we were having this conversation about, and she actually summed up mm. what I thought. This whole debate, this whole flat earth, round earth, whatever you want to call it, I found what she said to really perfectly sum up the whole thing. So I just wanted to take what she sent me on Instagram and put it up. If you guys want to give her a follow, again, she's really great when it comes to astrology and zodiac and all of those things where you know, I'm slightly lacking in that area. I get a lot of my information from her. So um, Miss J on IG said, I think it's possible to visualize Earth as you perceive it when you meditate, as well as recognize that separation is the illusion. Polarizing to one only perpetuates separation. It is the ego that wants to identify with form. It is the ego mm -hmm. that needs to be right. Mm -hmm. So beautifully said, and thank you all for your votes, and thank you all for your comments, and thank you for joining us tonight mm -hmm. for, you know, not really a debate, but no. again, hoping we can just kind of bridge that gap and mm -hmm. take this crazy amount of polarization and division and everything that we fight about and just start to realize that, you know, it really doesn't matter. And we really do just perceive things as we want to, mm -hmm. as we believe them. And yeah. we're going to just continue to create our reality that way. So mm -hmm. if we're always worried about being right and living in the ego, that we're going to, you know, have a, a harder time mm -hmm. staying in that high vibrational state because things are going to they're going to get to you. And mm -hmm. uh, that tends to keep mm -hmm. you operating under the neutrality line where we're trying to, you know, move above that. I'm talking about the Hawkins scale. Um, we're trying to move above neutrality into acceptance and surrender mm -hmm. and peace and joy and love and happiness and enlightenment yeah. and all of those things. Yeah. And uh, in order to do that, you need to move through the heart space, you need to be all accepting and loving. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the real message for tonight. Yeah. So we did want to finish with a bit of a meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to do a unity and a letting go meditation, probably five, 10 minutes, bit, bit of a quick one. But um, we encourage you to do this multiple times a week because it's a really big thing right now. Just letting go and then uh, pitch, opening up the canvas and picturing and creating that reality that you want to live in. So we're going to be doing that tonight in the World Pyramid. Um, so if you want to go and grab headphones now for a quick meditation, please go and do so. If you want a quick bathroom break, please go and do so. We'll uh, we'll kick off in about five minutes. 
and uh, we'll just maybe open up the uh, chat for questions. If you have any questions on anything tonight, uh, please do pop them in all caps in the chat and we'll just continue talking for the next five minutes until we're ready to get into that meditation space. So all caps, that's a good idea. All caps. No, it's amazing. Um, because of all of the energies this week, because of this crazy new moon, which is actually a super new moon, the first new moon of the new year, the lunar new year, the Chinese new year, um, there's a lot happening. And again, it's that energy of new beginnings. So this is a very hopeful time. This is a very magical time. This is a time to really set our intention because again, when these, uh, when these energies are big, the veil is thin. So David was talking mm -hmm. about that separation between the physical world and the etheric world. Well, it becomes a lot closer and the veil becomes a lot thinner and we start to manifest things a lot more quickly when we set our intentions. So mm -hmm. that is what we're going to do. And there's been a lot of energy coming up, like mm -hmm. from Mercury retrograde and this past week coming up to the new moon. It's always a big time of uh, lower vibrational stuff that we still need to let go of coming coming up for us. So, you know, whether you're arguing with friends or family or getting triggered by things or, you know, maybe there's some insecurities or, you know, just some vulnerabilities or impatience or, you know, things have come up this week. I know for mm -hmm. me, they really have. Um, it's about letting them go and starting fresh and forward and, and mm -hmm. really putting that energy and intention into the person that we want to become closer and closer to our higher self and letting go of those things that no longer serve us. So I mm -hmm. think David said he was just going to do the yeah. whole meditation yeah. tonight. And I'm just going to chill out and take advantage of it because I feel like I need this. <laughs> more than you do <laughs> angel lesson why do i blow out my sockets and light bulbs lights flickering when i get excited oh well my my first reply is always the same traditionally is seek the answers in meditation you have all the answers you need so ask your higher self my guess from speaking to other people who, who have similar occurrences is that um you are going through an, an energetic and electromagnetic um, phase of your life. Maybe this has happened to you before, I don't know, throughout your life. And if so, you're just very electromagnetic um, in your energy field. You're very expansive in your energy field. And the electronics um, have a hard time with that because there's a resonance mismatch. You're going higher and uh, or you're emitting a lot. And the 3D or the 2D, 3D technology um, is affected by that. So one thing you can do is to expand on that and try and do it intentionally. Mm. Try and use your, in a controlled environment, try and use your telekinesis as it would be to, to do that scientifically, test how you affect certain things. Um, and does it happen in other environments? Does it happen in um, all environments you go to or is it just yours? Because if it's just your environment as well, then maybe there's a portal or a stargate or an energetic hotspot where your particular place of residence is as well. Could be, I don't know. Reminds me of Stranger Things. Right, yeah, the telekinesis, yeah. <laughs> so all the time. And who knows, maybe there the veil is thin for you or or there is a spiritual energetic being that is close and you know, trying to communicate. Like, yeah, it it might be interesting to, you know, ask somebody who can read energies mm -hmm. or auras or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's just very, very interesting, yeah. Right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's get involved with this meditation. Then we're gonna sign off. Let's change the view here. Yeah, we do have another global math meditation coming up this Thursday. Mm -hmm. So this is just gonna be short and sweet to finish out the night on uh, on a good positive vibe. Yeah, let's take in some positive vibes for the next week. Always good. I'm layering in some music here, so you should be able to see that. All right, guys. Well, let's. Uh, <clears throat> I invite you all to close your eyes whenever you're ready. We'll do a quick preparation for tonight's quick meditation. But let's set the intention to just release some of the egoic knots that we have, the knots in the rope, 
with tonight's meditation. Let's also set the intention to send out a unifying energy to the collective to do the same, to awaken star seeds and light workers and call them to the fray, to the front line, to assist in healing the division that we sometimes find ourselves very deeply caught up in. Let us set that intention to heal and dissolve the division tonight. So take two or three really deep breaths. Fill the body with light, fill the cells with light. Breathe out any tension you have in your body. Let your body expand as you inhale and just relax as you exhale. Let go of any discordant energies or tensions in the physical body. We must prepare the physical vessel for the higher work with Alice Bailey's soul invocation, bringing us that familiar connection with the higher self from the physical body. I am the soul. I am the light divine. I am love. I am will. I am divine design. I call upon the pillar of the pure white light descend upon me, form all around me, move through me now. I ask for the presence of the I am that I am, merge and join with me now. So be it and so it is. Take a deep breath in. And let it go. Let us bring our awareness now to the heart center, the great path to ascension awaits us through this magical heart space. And as you bring your awareness to it, it expands. Imagine a great burning wall of light, a great sun in the center of your chest, golden white. And as you bring your awareness here, you feel lighter. You feel like floating. You feel your body moving up, up into the air gently and quietly up through the ceiling of your house or wherever you are. And as you get above your house, you feel there is something holding you down a little bit, a little weight of some kind. It's not allowing you to go any higher for you long to go into the night sky and higher to connect with the family of light above the earth. But there is something weighing you down like the hot air balloon. You feel there are great ropes attached to your etheric body. Emanating from the earth and attached to you, just gently holding you back. And these are your belief systems, beloved one that are not allowing you to soar higher at the moment. I invite you to imagine what they are. What is holding you back? What is keeping you from the higher vibrations right now? How many ropes are there? Perhaps there are none. My guess is there's one or two. I 
I want you to bring your discordant beliefs into your awareness. And we'll do a little exercise before we rise higher. Just take a maximum of three, no more tonight. Beginning with the first one, whatever it is, bring it into your mind's eye right now. And I want you to do one thing. I want you to accept that this is a limiting belief that you have. Maybe it's that you're not worthy. Maybe it's that you're not free. Maybe it's a number of things, whatever it is. Just accept that you've been holding this belief in your conscious mind. What I want you to do now is repeat these words. You'll find as you do, this rope detaches like it's been cut. Whatever that belief is that's holding you back, say it in your mind's eye, in mind's ear, right now. Say it again. This time after, say, I now accept this has been a limiting belief that has held me back until now. I release, I clear, and I let go of all the energetic cords attached to this belief system in this lifetime and all others I have lived. And I call upon my higher self to replace it with the most empowering belief system for me now. And so it is. So twice more now, let's bring in another limiting belief that you have. Bring your awareness to it. Repeat it in your mind's ear twice whatever it is. I accept such and such has been a limiting belief for me until now. And on the third time, I believe such and such has been a limiting belief for me up until now. But I now release. I clear. I remove all energetic ties to such and such. For it no longer serves me in this incarnation. In this lifetime and all others I've had, I release such and such as a limiting belief and I move forward now and I call upon my higher self to replace this limiting belief with the most empowering belief for me on my journey right now. And so it is. See the cord being cut feel a little bit lighter now. Almost ready to soar into the heavens like the helium balloon. One final time, beloved ones. Bring in whatever limiting belief system you have left into your awareness, into your mind's eye. Accept it so we can move on from it. I accept that such and such has been a limiting belief for me up until now. Say it once more. 
and once again, but this time, add on to the end. I now release, I clear, I let go of such and such limiting belief, and I move forward in this lifetime or another, all that I have lived, covering all incarnations. I release and let go of this limiting belief now. I call upon my higher self to replace this with the most empowering belief so that I may move forward on my ascension journey with grace and ease. And with that, and so it is, the final rope is cut. And as it is, you rise higher and higher now through the layer of clouds, higher into the sky, above the Earth's atmosphere, joining the family of light encircled around the planet. Looking down upon it, feeling light and free, feeling limiting belief systems gone. And as you look around at the other members of the family of light, you notice at their heart centers is a glowing sun, a great golden white light. It is now time to send the energies of unity, lightness, removing limited beliefs down to the planet. So let us face our hearts towards the earth and let us send down a beam of golden white light to the planet's surface together. Fill your hearts with love, forgiveness, unity in this beam and send it down to the earth. See it reaching every single man, woman and child, making the planet gold and white and filled with love and acceptance and unity. See the division falling away seeing the egos among men, women, and children being dissolved. See people coming together and embracing, shaking hands, forgiving each other, and laughing for all the egoic tendencies we've allowed to hold us back. See the great collective of humanity coming together as one, embracing our differences, loving one another, one great family of light. Really feel the divisions lifting. Use the will of your imagination to feel it. No more hate, no more divide, no more need to force our opinions on others. Seeing everyone as God does. Take a moment to visualize this new earth and it shall be so. Dot sat on. Om dot sat on. Om dot sat on.
feel the great unification of the planet. And whenever you're ready, let us start to come back now. You're encouraged to repeat this as many times as you can during the day, during the week, during the month. Sending this great God light and energy to the planet, other people, is a very, very important exercise. You're encouraged to do it often. So let us count back from five to zero now. The zero being back in your physical space with eyes open. Five, just coming back from the planet, going down through the atmosphere, down through the clouds. Four, getting lower and lower gently. Three, moving towards the tree line. And wherever you are, two, just passing down through the roof of your house. One, back into the physical body. And zero, whenever you're ready, eyes open, back into the physical. Welcome back. <laughs> well, folks, that concludes tonight's show. I hope we presented some uh, good viewpoints for you to take away and share. Please do share this meditation and this show with others if you feel like it adds value. If you uh, go to our website tonight or whenever and you like some of the designs and you want to buy some stuff, and you have any issues, please feel free to email us. There's plenty of contact forms on the website. I don't buy anything until you're ready to do so, if you do. Um, and uh, we're always here to answer questions. We have got some bugs with the website and things like that. So um, most of it's working fine, but uh, do reach out if you have any uh, issues to troubleshoot. We'll be right there with you. Uh, confirmation emails for orders do take a little bit longer. It'll take a few hours right now, so uh, be aware of that. But um, yeah, we just loved having you here tonight. We love sharing our thoughts with you as ever. We love doing meditations with you. We have our uh, podcast number one coming up with some amazing guests, and uh, we'll be announcing that shortly. Uh, join our mailing list. Actually, you can do that on our website. Scroll to the bottom of page one on the homepage and enter your email address there and send that to us, and you can get on our mailing list for notifications of upcoming meditations and shows. Yeah. Did you want to put up the last page of the slideshow? That's sure. just our um, our Instagram page. If you aren't already on there, but um, I just wanted to say again with these big energies and the the new moon and just the lunar new year, um, that was a great meditation tonight for humanity and for the collective. But. You know really set some individual intentions again because this is all mm -hmm. about what you desire and who you desire to be and what you desire to experience this year uh, we are all co-creators of our experience and our existence here so set that intention like what experiences do you want to have what kind of person do you want to be and uh, whatever seeds you're gonna plant that is what we will sow and that is where we will go so uh, another great big energy day we have our next global mass meditation coming up this thursday january 26th at 7 pm so that will be the last meditation of january and then our very first podcast episode one is happening monday january 31st so Stay tuned to our Instagram channel and we'll make some post updates online on YouTube as well. Uh, you know, just to, to let you know who those guests are gonna be. We are super excited for everything to come. Thank you so much for joining us tonight in love and in unity. Yeah, thank you for that donation, John. We do Aww, um, thanks, say John. thank you very much for your kind. So sweet. If anyone wants to make donations, we would encourage people to go to our website now. Um, thesunflowerlife.com forward slash donate 
because YouTube takes a massive percentage of that. So. Apparently they take a percentage. <laughs> I had no idea. I can't remember what it is, about 30 or 40%. I remember that, I think. Anyway, but um, thank you very much, John. Very kind of you. So sweet. It's really easy to do on YouTube, which is why it's really, I've done it before to many channels, in fact. But um, if you do want to donate, please go to the, uh, the link I the just sunflowerlife.com. Yep. We got our website up and running finally after a year, and it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. It's pretty cool. But again, we're optimizing. So anything that's kind of glitchy or out of place, um, we will be working on that. Mm -hmm. David will be working on that over yep. the next couple of weeks, and we're going to be adding more designs and we're going to be doing a lot more stuff. We have so much coming coming down the pipe. So we are very excited to connect with you all and, and share all of that with you. And again, thank you for coming tonight and bringing your energy and just your kindness and uh, your open heartedness and your open mindedness. Uh, it's very much appreciated at this time. Yeah, go and do an evaluation, guys. See what belief systems you have that are not serving <laughs> you, not allowing you to move forward in the highest vibration. Be critical of that within yourself. Not judgmental, but critical of what you think is holding back. And uh, do that meditation go and uh, empower yourself by asking your higher self to bring in your most empowered belief system to replace it and uh, see how you get on with that. But uh, we're out of time. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, please, please share the love and light wherever you are. That's how we get out of this mess. We go through it. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next uh, Global Mass Meditation next Thursday, I believe. And we wish you a wonderful start to the week. We just love you all. So thank you for being here. We love you. And Towards everything you think and everything you feel and everything you believe is valid. That's so right. Towards the light we go. keeping you. <laughs> Towards the light we go. We'll see you guys soon.